Welcome to my favorite week of the year. It is Sleep Week. Everyone loves Sleep Week. So, why is Sleep Week so great? Well, one is because we're discussing an activity that we all know and love. It's a time-consuming task that we do for about a third of our lives. It's also one of my specialty areas, and as such, I may include some details not covered in the textbook. So, just pay attention for that. Also, um... Depending on what version of the book you have, there are a couple things that are um, inaccurate in the text. So we'll kind of go over that so I can correct those as well. So before we really get into sleep, it's important to understand biological rhythms, especially circadian, um, but we'll talk about several different um, rhythms. So circadian rhythm is one of the most important factors um, in un understanding sleep. So circadian is just one of the body's natural rhythms, and it gets its name from the Latin for about day, because it lasts approximately one day. Circadian rhythm is important for a lot of behaviors, including um, just being active. Um, we'll talk about this more as time goes on, but the peaks and valleys of circadian really are important for your day-to-day -day life. Uh, for instance, one of the peaks is in the morning when you're trying to wake up. So the circadians tend to help you get out of bed. Also, one of the natural valleys in the circadian, it goes up and down twice a day. Uh, one of the natural valleys is 2.30, uh, 2.30 in the afternoon. And that's why 5-Hour Energy has made a ton of money talking about this 2.30 feeling that's actually natural, especially your, your circadian rhythm going down. That's why you feel tired at 2.30. But we'll get into that more, more later on. So circadian rhythm is a daily rhythm um, that lasts about 24 hours. Um, with this, it guides the activity of two types of... Um, I guess you could say you can describe the activity of animals in two ways. First, they're a diurnal. Diurnal animals are active during the day, whereas nocturnal animals, of course, are active during the night. So the animal's activity is tied to their circadian rhythm, as are their sleep cycles. So how does the circadian get set? Well. The answer is zeitgebers. So zeitgebers play an important role in maintaining a proper circadian rhythm. They are signals, usually light and dark, that help regulate circadian rhythm and keep it within a 24-hour period. They are also important for a phase shift, which is a shift in the biological rhythm um, that's typically um, done by synchronizing the body to environmental stimuli. So the process of shifting one circadian rhythm is called entrainment. And it takes a little time, um, which is part of the reason why we have jet lag. Overall, it's easier to shift um, going from east to west than it is going from west to east. Based upon this, research has actually found that NFL teams that go west to east and have to play early games lose significantly more than if they don't travel or have to go east to west. Um, however, if they're playing a night game, they'll win more than 60% of the time. So which way you go does make a big difference um, with that. So also one thing that I like to mention with Zeitgebers is some are more powerful than others. Uh, one that's really powerful is blue light. Blue light really is important for resetting your circadian rhythm. And unfortunately, it's also something that iPads and iPhones and um, well, all smartphones emit a lot of. So if you're having trouble sleeping and um, you're playing on your phone, you can actually move, you can shift your circadian rhythm because your brain's seeing that as being day. And that's not good. So something to keep in mind. So those external cues are zeitgebers. So we know that circadian rhythms are driven by zeitgebers, but what if those clues aren't available? For instance, what if you spend all your time in a cave or in a dimly lit room? Uh, would you still have a rhythm? We have found that the answer is yes. What happens is the animal or human goes into a free running schedule, meaning that the body is going without external cues. In doing so, we can actually determine the length of the circadian rhythm.
in most animals, including humans, it tends to be a little over 24 hours. In humans, it's actually about 25 hours. Thus, as you can see in the image on the right, the sleep cycle tends to drift a bit over time um, when you take away those night divers. So what you see here is this phase shift where it goes from being, you know, pretty regular here to shifting about an hour each night um, over the course of a study. So with this, um, many of the participants who were taking part in the study, it was actually a study where they spent 21 days um, living under these conditions. And that many of them were very surprised to learn that the study was over because they had only experienced 19 sleep wake cycles. Because since they're, since it was a little longer than 24 hours, um, their body's natural day was a little longer than an actual day. So pretty cool stuff. So how does the body maintain its biological clock? Well, the secret appears to be the suprachiasmatic nucleus, or SCN. The SCN is a small part of the hypothalamus that is right above the optic chiasm, hence its name. Uh, we believe it's responsible for a biolog biological clock for several reasons. First, when the SCN is lesioned, uh, we see deficits in animal sleep activities and eating. Further, when we put it in a petri dish, the SCN cells actually have electrical activity that corresponds with the day-night schedule that they experienced prior to being extracted. Lastly, uh, when cells from another donor animal's SCN are implanted, the recipient animal starts behaving as if it had the biological rhythm of the donor animal. Thus, there's strong evidence to believe that the SCN is responsible for these um, these rhythms that we see. So here's an example from one of the studies. So here you see a pretty pronounced sleep weight cycle. So these are sleep cycles here. And then the SCN gets removed, and then you just see this random, you know, sleep throughout the day. Uh, just not really any solid amount. And then when they transplant cells from, um, back in, you start to slowly but surely see reorganiz reorganization of the sleep cycle. Again, one of the main zeitgebers for the circadian rhythm is light. However, there's a special pathway that is used instead of the normal visual system pathway. In mammals, the light information travels to the SCN via the retinohypothalamatic pathway. Try saying that three times fast because I had trouble saying it once. So first, there are retinal ganglion cells that contain a photopigment called uh, melanopsin. Therefore, they are sensitive to light, just like rods and cones are. When they are contacted by light, um, this information travels along the uh, retinohypothalamatic pathway. Um, in, it travels along this tract to the suprachiasmatic nucleus. So it, goes along the uh, retinohypothalamatic pathway um, to the SC SCN. And because of um, the special way of getting the information, even animals that are actually born without rods and cones and thus are blind can get the circadian information. Also, since this tract does not go to the visual cortex, if you have cortical blindness that is caused by brain damage to the visual cortex, um, it will not affect the circadian rhythm with this. So with this, the body also has a couple other rhythms that vary in duration. So um, you have ultradian rhythms, which are more than once a day. So feeding behavior, for instance, is one of these. There are also circannual rhythms, which are um, roughly you know, annual rhythms. So these are things like body weight, hibernating behavior, things like that. And then there are ephradian rhythms, which occur less than once, um, occur less than once a day, but not, you know, annually. So an example here is a menstrual cycle, for instance. It's kind of in the middle. 
So, again, sleep is strongly associated with the circadian rhythm, and thus is affected by external events such as light and dark that affect circadian rhythm. However, there are other factors that play, uh, that are in play, such as food, jobs, and alarm clocks that determine whether or not we are asleep. Without these cues, the free-running circadian rhythm, again, is about 25 hours. So if you don't have any clues or cues um, in the environment, um, you're going to be, your body's going to think a day is about 25 hours just naturally. So what you see is here you have the cues. When it's removed, people shift about an hour every day until the cues are added, and then very quickly it shifts back more toward um, what you'd naturally expect.